Hi, I'm Christopher Dahl, space and science fiction artist. Last year, I was approached by the Talos Museum out of Georgia to help them create a set of planets of the solar system for an exciting new outdoor kiosk display. I had to create all eight of the known planets, including the Sun, the asteroid Ceres, and Pluto. And for each planet, we had to have a, the planet and a backup copy. It was a big project, and I am thrilled to have been able to work with them on this, and I'm very excited to show you this behind-the-scenes look at how I went about making the planets. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to head over to the shop, and I'll show you some footage. Ah, oh, it's a warm day. Okay, so here's the setup. We have basically a drill moto tool on a drill press, which I've had this for a while. That's nice because I can keep a very small gap underneath this cutting wheel. Now, the what we need are domes like this that have just basically an edge. This is gonna be great for the planets. What I was able to get are these acrylic domes here, but they have a flange on them. So the goal is to cut the flange off in a way that makes it nice and smooth, just like this. We went through a lot of different ideas on how to do this. Uh, I was consulting with a friend of mine who actually has a lot of machining equipment, lathes and lasers and so forth. Um, this actually turned out to be the most consistent. I can get the flange cut fairly quickly uh, basically three passes around this. It's all a little wobbly, but once you kind of get going with it, it's not bad. Um, the only real danger part is if the, uh, if, the, if the cutting discs break. But fortunately, I have a pile of those. And of course, safety goggles and ear protection and gloves. Just to keep things safe. popped a couple of spots. Hemispheres ready to go. <laughs> yes. And here we have a lovely view of my workbench, which uh, has my exhaust fan and a whole bunch of tools and a lot of chemistry. Yeah. All of the paints. I'm using the golden line of acrylic paints. These are fluid acrylics. They work very well with my airbrushes. I have a couple of tools here. This is my, my little fan brush. It's great for crafting those gorgeous clouds. A uh, couple of little, couple little brushes for some details. I actually use this brush solely for cleaning the airbrushes out, and a little paint mixing tool uh, for the airbrush. I I have a glass palette here for when I actually do the hand painting. Although most of the last couple of planets have all been airbrushed, which is great. Uh, to my right, I've got airbrush cleaner. My well, the airbrush cleaner and cleaning station. These little doodads are really great for cleaning an airbrush because you don't have to spray it into the air. You can actually just clean it right on in there. And some more little tools on this tray. And my two airbrushes. I have the Iwata HPC, which I've had forever. Oh, gosh, I didn't get that side cleaned. Huh, go figure. Um, it's okay. The inside's all cleaned out on this. It's just great. This is a dual-action airbrush. 
uh, where you push down for air and then pull back for, uh, for paint. It gives you a nice variation. And I have a second airbrush, which I just got for this project. This is the little Iwata HPM2. It's a little different. Uh, same principle. Paint goes in the cup, uh, not on your fingers. And you spray just by pushing straight down. And you adjust the thickness of the line with this little knob on the back here. The advantage of this is I, if I have a set line or shape, I don't have to worry about messing around with this, which doesn't seem like a lot, but if you're airbrushing for long periods of time, it can get to be a little tedious. There goes on my airbrush holder here, and they're all connected up to my little compressor on the bottom here. Mr. Silent Air, Super Silent 30. It's a great little airbrush. Yeah. My next set of planets. Here are, we're gonna use these for Neptune. Um, so each one of these halves is still in its case, have had their flanges removed, so they're just hemispheres. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. So these clever little tools are kind of fun. Mm -hmm. I have taken and a motorized, what would this be called? This is like, this is for like turning small clay. Um, like if you're gonna do pottery, like small pottery, there's a little wheel on top. I have actually taken an extra Saturn ring for my pal Joe and placed it on top. And this little, this little black part, I've got another one right here. These are actually little plastic holders for displaying footballs, which I don't actually have, but they work really great for holding a planet upright. Why would I do all of this? Well, some planets you actually can do, you get them all hooked up on there and spin the thing around, and then you just basically come in with your airbrush here and spray away. Makes for a very nice process. It's also really good for doing Saturn's rings. But yeah, kind of fun. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plot some lines on Neptune's surface. And as you can see, I have four domes. That's because I'm basically doing two Neptunes and I need a front and a back for both. So we're going to do them all at the same time so that they all look the same. And hopefully they'll all be equally cool. Okay, and here we are preparing for Neptune. As you can see, I already have a couple of my domes ready to go. I have the backsides uh, up here as well. I've already applied a piece of tape to the north. And what you're seeing here with this masking tape here, use this wonderful Tamiya masking tape to mark off a couple of cloud bands you see in Neptune, there are, might be hard to see in this, I might just grab it. There are actually a couple of darker bands north and south. And I wanted to make sure that I had them somewhat marked on these before I start spraying them from the inside. Now, these aren't terribly accurate. They aren't intended to be like straight lines, like graphics. The clouds that I'll be painting undulate a little bit up and down. Uh, on both sides. I just needed reference so I don't go wildly off center from them. And the nice thing about this tape is, you know, you can see it from the inside. So, yeah. There are a couple of very prominent clouds and um, storms from the Voyager imagery way back in, gosh, the 1980s. So I am going to try to match that as much as possible. There's going to be about three or four different shades of blues on this, plus some whites for the clouds. Just a touch of thalo blue. This is going to give it a nice little blue-green, almost, appearance. I'm just going to take the tiniest amount of it, and we're going to mix it in with our white here, just until we get just a bit of an off blue. It doesn't take much. Thalo blue is very, very strong brighter. This is still going to show up very bright on the planet itself. Take this off here, work a little bit off. There we go. All right, and then 
I'll just continue adding this to the edges of this one here. I put it on kind of thick like that. And while it's still wet, I clean the brush off and we'll just work it in just a little bit. Smudge it in around with the white. That's cool. This is a very subtle effect, but it's going to help it read less as just one long white glob and maybe have a little bit of a little bit of light blue with it. And after completing the cloud detail, I came back in afterwards with layers of blues to complete the surface of Neptune. For some of the planets, though, I had to create complicated maps to showcase specific detail, especially the Earth. And for this, we used a trick from people who used to make globes. We cut these maps out, placed them around the outside of the globe so I could actually see all the details from the inside. From there, I was able to accurately place details, like in the case of the Earth, with continents and clouds and all of the other details, after which I backfilled with all the blues for the oceans. Here we go. I already did a darker blue in the deepest spots of the oceans and a little bit of a lighter blue closer to the Gulf of Mexico and across the shorelines. I've done the same thing with the other hemispheres as well. But these are semi-transparent colors, so the net effect of each layer is that these will be darker, being that they're the middle of the ocean, and I'll still have some lighter where the Gulf of Mexico is. This final coat is actually a 50-50 mixture of cerulean blue and phthalo blue, which is going to be semi-opaque. And again, it's important that I go over all of the areas that are basically ocean and even some over the continents. Now, let's take a peek at one of these. I'm gonna pull one that I've already worked on since it's gonna have dried up a little bit. This one has North America and South America. I pull the outside map off. And we have the Earth. Being very careful at this point not to touch it in case I have paint on my hands, but all painted backwards. And here are the completed planets, starting with the sun, working our way to cratered craters and details. Next, we move on to the planet Venus, enshrouded in clouds. This one was primarily an airbrush treatment from the inside. And then on to the Earth, our familiar home world with its lush blues from the oceans and the continents and clouds. From there, we move on to Mars, rendered in all of its orange-yellow glory with dark patches, volcanoes, and canyons. Next, we have the asteroid Ceres, a cratered world with mysterious bright mountaintops. And next up, the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter, with its vast storms collecting as bands of clouds, including the Great Red Spot. Saturn, the second largest planet of the solar system, is a pastel beauty. And next up, Uranus is the only planet that actually faces the sun. And of course, Neptune, which we looked at earlier with its beautiful blues and stormy cloud patterns. And finally, we move on to Pluto, most recently photographed by the New Horizons probe, showing its icy surface in a multitude of colors. I'll put a link to the video where I talk about each of the planets in more detail in the description below. And there we go. That's the process I went through to make each 
of the planets. I'd like to thank the folks at TELUS Museum for reaching out to me on this exciting project, and I'm so looking forward to seeing how they look once they're installed. Thank you, everybody.